guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're just going to do a quick review on the Honda Blackbird. Taking a few local roads. Probably pick a few bugs up along the way. It's been extremely hot in the UK the last couple of days. We're well over 30 degrees C, so about 90 Fahrenheit. It's very humid as well, so not all that pleasant out on the bike, I must admit. Long run yesterday after work, about 180 miles, which was nice. Not going anywhere near that far today. So let's go on with this review then. So Honda Blackbird launched in 1996 by Honda. Uh, had a production lifespan of about 10 years, or until 2006. The world's fastest production bike at the time, 175 miles per hour, give or take. Suzuki Hayabusa came along two years later, knocked it off its perch and became the fastest production bike. with the Honda Blackbird though, it was never really an all-out sports bike, unlike the Hayabusa. The Blackbird is a sports touring bike, so they had a little bit different seating position, they're not true clip-on bars, they're above the top yoke, uh, which means you do set up a little bit higher. Um, they're 165 horsepower, um, by modern standards that's not a huge amount. at the time 165 horsepower from an 1100cc bike was pretty impressive and it's the way that the, the Blackbird delivers the power that's probably the most impressive so even from low revs when you're going along you can roll on the throttle and it just pulls and pulls and pulls it's not a light bike 225 kilos there or thereabouts but it doesn't stop you throwing it around too much it's obviously not a sports bike you can't throw it around like you would um, would a more modern bike for modern sports bikes are 160 kilos nimble than this but that said to be fair these are amazing handling bikes for what they are Honda really pulled it out of the bag with these so early models 1996 to about 98 uh, were carburetted and then they switched to their PGM FI fuel injection All three of the bikes I've had have been carbureted early models. Uh, there's pros and cons to each, I guess. Uh, the carbureted ones take a more happy if you're going to put aftermarket cans and things on. The fuel injected models are a little bit more fussy. There's no difference in power or top speed. So in reality it doesn't make too much difference there are reports that the fuel injected bikes are actually a little bit thirstier than the carburetted ones uh, i don't know if that's true i get about 45 to miles per gallon out of mine that's uk gallons but then i'm not a particularly fast rider i guess if you were riding much quicker than i do then you'd get through a lot more fuel. The brakes on these bikes are linked as standard, so front brakes and rear brakes are linked, so when you apply the front brake, it applies two of the three pistons in each caliper at the front and the center one in the rear caliper. And when you apply the rear brake, it applies the two outer ones and the center one at the front. Some people like that, some people don't. 
Uh, you can de-link them if you want to. And if you were going to use the bike on the track or you're a much faster rider than I am, then maybe you would do that. But for touring use, I actually find it really good because you can, it keeps the bike nice and balanced under heavy braking. And if you're in traffic, in slow moving traffic, you can just use the rear brake and you've got plenty of stopping power there. Like I said, you can de-link them if you want to and go to conventional brakes. A little bit complicated. It does away with quite a lot of pipe work on the bike and simplifies things a lot. But to be honest, I quite like the linked brakes. They work, seem to work very well. Riding position on the Blackbird is kind of halfway between touring bike and a sports bike. Um, I'm five foot ten. Um, it's not a particularly long reach to the bars for me. This is all standard in terms of riding position. You can see the bars are on top of the forks, on top of the yoke. You can get bar riser kits for these, which make you sit far more upright. You can fit VFR 800 bars on them if you can find any. And there's also straight bar conversions for them as well. Personally, I'm not a fan. I actually quite like the position on the Blackbird. It suits the style of bike. And if you're doing a lot of touring, especially long motorway runs, having the lower bars does help. It reduces the wind pressure on your body and actually makes it much more comfortable. If you're doing a lot of slow riding, then I can see there might be some benefits to raising the bars a little bit to sit you up straighter. But it's entirely personal preference. Reliability wise, I've never had any issues with mine. I have... Like I said, I have had three of them. Two of those I used for commuting daily. Did 10,000 miles a year on them. Absolutely no issues whatsoever with either of them. However, there are a couple of things that are worth noting with them. Higher mileage bikes can suffer with cam chain tension and failures, which is fairly common on, on the four cylinders. And the other thing that's prone to failure on these is the uh, regulator rectifier which controls the voltage that you, your bike receives from the alternator. Steps it down from several hundred volts AC down to 13 and a half to 14 volts for charging your bike. Typically what it results in when they fail is a high, high charging voltage which fries batteries. But on the carburetor bikes it doesn't do too much else. On the fuel injection bikes it can cause other issues if your reg rack fails. There's lots of aftermarket ones available which remove the weakness. So if you do buy a bike, change the cam chain tensioner, change the regulator rectifier unless you know it's already been done and you'll have a nice solid reliable bike. One of my least favourite things about the Honda Blackbird is the seat. Um, I did another video where I went and picked up a picked up a new seat for my Blackbird. I've now done several hundred miles on that seat and it's been excellent. It's really transformed my riding experience and I don't get a sore bum anymore, which is, which is brilliant. The standard seat's a bit hard, it doesn't have too much padding on it. Uh, quite a lot of people fit aftermarket seats on these. Again, a lot of people buy them for touring. The standard seat's not like, not ideal for that, if I'm honest. I guess one of the things we should talk about is one of the Blackbird's strengths is the power delivery. Power delivery on this bike is unlike anything else. Honda really did work some magic. incredibly smooth this bike there is absolutely no vibration on it whatsoever said so it just pulls from low rpm all the way up to the red line as you can imagine from a bike that used to be the fastest bike on the planet fastest production bike on the planet there is endless amounts of power certainly for road use 
it's the way that the Blackbird delivers power that really sets it apart. The Blackbird will pull from 2,000 revs very easily, and certainly at slow speeds, which makes riding in traffic actually quite pleasant. So it's very easy to ride. And then as you get up the rev range, it turns into a ballistic missile, effectively. And it doesn't really matter what speed you're in, or what gear you're in, if you open the throttle, you're going to the horizon very, very quickly. One of the things I would say about the Blackbird is you don't really get a sense of speed on them. It's very easy to go very, very fast on them, which may or may not be a drawback. It depends how much you value your driving licence. Because they are so smooth and there is literally no vibration on them whatsoever, you really don't realise how fast you're going. Their smoothness is just the key word with the Blackbird. Smooth and effortless, I think two words that I would use to sum them up. It's one of the reasons I keep coming back to them. I just cannot beat them on a long drive or on a long ride. These really just are a pleasure to ride these bikes, even at slow speed. The gearboxes are so smooth. Throttle response is nice and easy. Even going through the town like this, there's absolutely no hassle at all. just tootling along at 2,000 revs and the bike's perfectly happy it's not complaining at all so the gearbox is beautiful on these and at slow speed they're actually still really easy to ride the steering gets a little bit heavier at slow speeds but it's not difficult because it's not unmanageable I actually had one of these as my third bike about a year after I passed my test so I was a relatively inexperienced rider at that time and to be fair, it was probably a little bit too much of a handful for me then. But now having been riding 10 years, this is probably one of the easiest bikes to ride. It's not an uncomfortable bike to ride at slow speed. You do have to just remember it does have, does have relatively low bars, so you do need to sit up a little bit just to keep your weight off them. It's not. It's not exactly tricky. So this is Ely Cathedral, guys. It's obviously shut at the moment because of COVID. city this it's also the smallest city in the UK come and do a bit more of a tour of it at some point it's only a few miles from home beautiful place a little river run through it as well
Pigo that is 40 miles per hour in sixth gear at 2000 rpm the bike is completely happy with that if I roll the throttle on it doesn't pick up particularly quickly but it does pick up and just pull no complaining no juddering nothing at all the bike just picks up and goes and that is the main thing with the Blackbird that just sets it apart it's so easy to ride, it's very forgiving, it's very smooth and unless you're trying to make a lot of progress very quickly it doesn't really doesn't matter too much what gear you're in the bike will just pull this is one of the things with these bikes they are quite large uh, it doesn't mean that filtering is particularly difficult on them but if you've got panniers on them as well it can it does make the bike very wide so you just have to be a little bit wary of that that's not that different to other big bikes if i'm honest the other thing i want to talk about just quickly is the mirrors the mirrors on this bike are amazing a lot of people end up fitting extensions on them because they find their elbows are in the way but for me they're actually fine um, it's as much a posture thing as it is anything else um, I tend to keep my elbows tucked in quite tight so I can see quite easily in both mirrors unlike a lot of four-cylinder bikes those mirrors work all the time all the way up to as fast as you dare go and all the way through the rev range there is no vibration on them whatsoever. They're like car mirrors. People might argue if you're riding a Blackbird you don't really need to worry about what's behind you. Which to a certain extent is true because virtually everything can be behind you if you want it to be. But if you're riding in town or you're doing a lot of motorway riding where you're changing lanes a lot then those mirrors really do come into their own. We're back on the open road again now, doing about 60 miles per hour. So this is the Blackbird strong point. It's just enough wind pressure on my chest to take all the weight off my wrists without any effort. Which is one of the reasons why these bikes are so comfortable on a long run really any speed over about 50 miles per hour and there's enough wind to do that so in, in summary Blackbird is actually an awesome all-rounder if you ever get a chance to ride one please do don't underestimate them they are still an extremely capable bike despite being the best well, over 20 years old now in, the, in terms of design they're not the fastest anymore, they're not the lightest. They certainly don't have the best brakes when you compare them to a modern sports bike. But really there's nothing on the market that really compares to them. Even so, Honda don't have anything in their lineup at the moment that compares to these. The closest thing you can probably buy is the Kawasaki ZZR 1400. Again, it's still a different bike, it's much bigger st even still. Um, it's got a more sporty riding position. So it is just a different bike. If you do ever get a chance to ride one of these, do it. See what all the fuss is about. You might like it, you might hate it. Different strokes for different folks and all that. If you do have one, or you want to ride one, it's always been your dream bike, or you're looking at buying one, leave us a comment below. If you've got any questions, again, leave a comment below. I'll see if I can get back to you. So I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. 
I hope you've enjoyed this little review. There's a huge amount more I could have said. But I don't like to waffle on too much. If you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe. Come back for some more new content in the next couple of weeks. I'm going home to have a cold beer. It's very hot out here. Have a great weekend. I'll see you again soon.